And now additional fallout today from a brand new report finding the dynamics of the American family are changing. According to the Pew Research Center, mothers are now the sole or primary provider in four out of ten households that include children under the, under the age of 18. Back in 1960, that number was just 11 percent. The report sparking a debate on Lou Dobbs tonight over on FBN over whether this spells problems for families. Listen. When we're watching society dissolve around us, one, what do you think? You're seeing, I think, systemically, larger than the political stories that we follow every day, something going terribly wrong in American society, and it's hurting our children. Lou, I'm so used to liberals telling conservatives that they're anti-science, but I mean, th this is liberals who defend this and say it's not a bad thing are very anti-science. When you look at biology, look at the natural world, the roles of, of a, a male and a female in society and other animals, the, the male typically is the, the dominant role, the, the female, it's not antithesis or it's not competing, it's a complementary role. Bottom line, it could undermine our social order. Joining me now, Lou Dobbs, host of Lou Dobbs Tonight on the Fox Business Network, and Eric Erickson, editor of RedState.com and a Fox News contributor. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So I'll start with you, Eric. What makes you dominant and me submissive, and who died and made you scientist in chief? Oh, the, it, it doesn't have anything to do with submissiveness per se, and it was certainly poorly constructed how I said it. What I meant by that was when you look uh, throughout society, look at other animals, the, the male of the species tends to be the, the protector, the, the dominant one in that regard. And we've gotten to a point in this country where you have a lot of feminists who think that the male and female roles are completely interchangeable, that, that there is no need for a man to support his family. You've got men walking away. You've got women becoming single mothers, not by their choice. You got a lot of people thinking it's a lifestyle choice. This isn't healthy for society when we think that roles of gender completely can be interchangeable. No one's saying women can't be or shouldn't be a breadwinner, or even the primary breadwinner. It's just that when we forced ourselves to this point in society where they have to be, that's not a good, healthy thing for society. All right, but that's not exactly what you have been saying over the past couple of days. You got in trouble on Lou's show. We'll get to you in, we'll get to you in a minute, Mr. Dobbs. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> but you, you made these comments and then you, you posted uh, a blog at Red State uh, trying yep. to expand on your comments. And, and let's put for, to the, for the moment to the side the issue of single parents, mm -hmm. because that is dicier and there is more data to support the notion that ch children right. who are in single parent fa uh, families don't fare as well often. Uh, but you took it well, well beyond that. This is from your, your blog. In modern society, we're not supposed to point out that children in a two-parent heterosexual nuclear household have a better chance at long-term success in life than others. In modern society, we're supposed to applaud feminists who teach women they can have it all, that there's no gender identifying role and women can fulfill the role of husbands and fathers just as men do. Now, there is data in the scientific community to suggest that children of homosexual uh, couples who are happily married and are good parents fare no worse than children of heterosexual couples. And there is plenty of data to suggest that children of working moms, as opposed to stay-at-home moms, wind up just as healthy and able to thrive in society than the children of stay-at-home mothers. Yeah, you know, Megan, I, I tend to dispute that data largely because it's been so self-selective. If you take the most comprehensive study, for example, of gay families that came out of the University of Texas, that the left has tried to undermine, the, the sociologists who studied it noted that many of these studies that show there are no problems are typically of high income lesbian families. And when you study higher income families, you're absolutely right. Uh, working mothers are very high income. Their children, there really isn't a big difference. But when you go into the middle class, where a lot of these issues are bubbling up. When you have a mom who's working 12 hours a day and a dad who's working 12 hours a day and they come home and they're also trying to be good parents, you, you can't have it all. And they're making compromises. And it, it, I'm not judging them and no one should, you but it's just a reality. Them. You are, no, though. I'm, you, I'm not judging you them. You are. You are because you come out very clearly and say that you believe that women who choose to work, instead of staying, staying at home to, quote, nurture their children and instead have the father do that, are imposing a, a worse future on their children than women who make a, a different choice, the choice you and your wife made. It, Megan, I, I don't view it as judging. I, I view it as a statement of fact that when you've got a mom who's working full time and then coming home trying to be a full time mom as well, it's very difficult. And I think three quarters of the public, according to the Pew poll, agree that it's just, much just harder to do. Just because you have people who agree with you doesn't mean it's it's not offensive. 
Uh, and, well, I, and I know look, in your, I know I in your blog, I know too. in your blog, you talk about how you believe it's it's feminists, and I don't know what the word is, uh, something, some sort of liberals. Eco liberals? What did you call them? <laughs> emo liberal. The, right. yeah, the, I don't know what that is. About it. But I don't think I'm an emo liberal, and I don't describe <laughs> I don't myself think you as a are feminist. Either. But I will tell you, I was offended by your piece nonetheless. I didn't like what you wrote one bit, and I do think you are judging people. You're, you, to me, you sound like somebody who's judging but wants to come out and say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, and now let me judge, judge, judge. And by the way, it's science, it's science, it's science, it's fact, 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 fact. Well, I mean, I have a whole, this is a list of studies saying your science is wrong and your facts are wrong. I want to get Lou in. Lou? You I'm agree with this? Because you, you certainly sounded like you agreed with him when he was on your show. Uh, well, let me, let, let me give you the sound of the, careful, the agreement, and, and that is this. What I said, uh, and what I would acknowledge immediately, is that uh, Eric is wrong about nature itself. The male is not always dominant, uh, whether it be in a pride of lions uh, or whether it be in a, uh, uh, the queen bee and her hive and, and workers. Uh, but when the Serengeti is on fire, and that's what I was saying, it is time to look at what the impact here is. We are looking at a war on drugs that we're losing. We're looking at an economy in which jobs are not being replaced with e either equal pay or near equal pay uh, with a replacement job. We are watching classic, traditional jobs in construction, manufacturing that have been male dominated in the sense that they are the they were the predominant uh, number of uh, workers uh, disappearing we are looking at a society in which change is the absolute hallmark and for people and for anyone in any discussion in any uh, uh, debate uh, on what is happening with women in the workplace to ignore the fact that we have marriages breaking up, uh, shattering in this society, and we know that that reduces by at least a... Why are you attributing that to women in the workforce? Excuse me. I, let me just finish what I'm saying, if I may, oh, dominant one. The, the fact is Excuse me? that three times <laughs> as many people in a single family, a single parent household are likely to end up with great psychological illness, with severe but we psychological were putting to the side illness single parent and We were putting me? that to the side. We were putting that we to the side. We can't put it to the side. You can't put it to yes, the side. Yes, we can, Lou, because we've had that debate, and that's not what this debate was about. The it debate, is exactly the, the, the what place it's I took about. the debate. It's exactly what no, it's about. No, it isn't. Think it is not. Because think Eric about took the it. reason. Think about the reason. Let me go back to Eric. No, because you're getting out of bounds. You're getting out of bounds on the safer territory. Let me go back to Eric, because this is from your blog. This is according to Eric Erickson, and I quote, the truth. Kids most likely will do best in households where they have a mom at home nurturing them while dad is out bringing home the bacon. American Psychological Association 2010 study, according to a review of 50 years of research, children whose mothers work are no more likely to have any problems than kids whose mothers stay at home. They studied 69 yeah. studies over 59 years right. of research. Your fact and your science, Eric, is not supported by the American Psychological well, maybe, Association, let, let the, the American well, Acad Ac the Academy of Pediatrics, Columbia University study, University of North Carolina study. I mean, why are we supposed to take your word for it, Eric Erickson's science, instead of all of these experts? Well, it, because one, I think the experts can be as politically motivated as anyone else when it comes to these particular studies, because it plays into a particular current notion that it's okay. And, and second, I do think when you got three quarters of the public willing to recognize that the increase in moms as breadwinners, uh, it makes it harder to raise kids. Yeah, I think most people understand moms typically are more nurturing than dads. Not always, not in all cases, and it, it, it's painting very broad brushstrokes. I admit. Do but you know? I, I do you do know that? Do you know that in this country, in the, in the 50s and 60s, there were huge, huge numbers of people that believed that the children of interracial marriages were oh, inferior, were biologically right. inferior, and that is why yes. it was it was illegal for blacks and whites to marry in some states in this country up until 1967. I, I and they said it was science, that. and it was fact. If you were the child of a black father and a white mother or vice versa, right. you were inferior and you were not going to set up for success. Tell that to Barack Obama. Look, it, make it look. I completely agree with you on that, but I, I do think there absolutely is something to kids having a stable home life. I'm not saying moms can't work. I'm not saying dads should be What's the only ones to work. What's unstable about having a working mother and a, and a nurturing, I, loving, stay-at-home father? 
you know, if it works for you, God bless you for it working for you. But, but I do think that most people need to realize that, that it may work on an individual case. But in generalities, I do think having the mom who's the nurturing one at home when kids are little. My wife worked when my child was little. I'm but that's your not choice. God bless you and your wife and exactly. your choice. And it, nobody it would take it's that away from you. But you are right. denigrating the choices made by others. Let I, me get back to Lou. I'm not Let negative. me get back to Lou and, and take it away from the single parent thing because that's not... <laughs> I mean, the facts are the, what the facts are and what happens with I've made your families. life harder, Lou. I'm but I'm sorry. trying to ask Lou to weigh in on your much more controversial statements mm -hmm. about <laughs> loving families, p both parents present, and your, your notion that it is damaging to yeah. children to have a, the mother as the primary wage earner. Okay. Lou, I'll give you the last word. Okay. The last word on this is I won't take up his argument. He's done very well or as best he can against, uh, against uh, your views. But the reason it's important to look at the impact of single parent households and not take away from uh, the discussion, but really add to it. Boys, males are far more impacted by the disruption that surrounds a single parent household. And the result is, in part, what we're seeing in society as they age and fail to be entering law school. Uh, uh, going to get through high school for crying mm -hmm. out loud. Mm -hmm. It is very important to keep that in the discussion, in the debate. I got it. And meanwhile, God bless you and my wife and my daughters. I think I came Absolutely. out of this all right. <laughs> I, I, I look, guys, I realize I'm in the 14th century.